a military junta HNT, DN is a government led by a committee of military leaders. The term junta means meeting or committee and originated in the national and local junta organized by the Spanish resistance to Napoleon's invasion of Spain in 1808. One the term is now used to refer to an authoritarian form of government characterized by oligarchic military dictatorship, as distinguished from other categories of authoritarian rule, specifically strong autocratic military dictatorships machine oligarchic party dictatorships and bosses of autocratic party dictatorships. A junta often comes to power as a result of a coup d'etat. One the junta may either formally take power as the nation's governing body, with the power to rule by decree, or may wield power by exercising binding but informal control over a nominally civilian government. Three these two forms of junta rule are sometimes called open rule and disguised rule. Four disguised rule may take the form of either civilianization or indirect rule. Four civilianization occurs when a junta publicly ends its obviously military features, but continues its dominance. For for example, the junta may terminate martial law, forego military uniforms in favor of civilian attire, colonize government with former military officers, and make use of political parties or mass organizations. 5. Indirect rule involves the junta's exertion of concealed, behind-the-scenes control over a civilian puppet. For indirect rule by the military can include either broad control over the government or control over a narrower set of policy areas, such as military or national security matters. Since the 1920s, military juntas have been frequently seen in Latin America, typically in the form of an institutionalized, highly corporate professional junta headed by the commanding officers of the different military branches Army, Navy, and Air Force and sometimes joined by the head of the national police or other key bodies. Three political scientists Samuel Finer, writing in 1988, noted that juntas in Latin America tended to be smaller than juntas elsewhere the median junta had 11 members, while Latin American juntas typically had three or four. Three corporate military coups have been distinguished from factional military coups. The former are carried out by the armed forces as an institution, led by senior commanders at the top of the military hierarchy, while the latter are carried out by a segment of the armed forces and are often led by mid-ranking officers. A 2014 study published in the annual Review of Political Science Journal found that military regimes behaved differently from both civilian dictatorships and autocratic military strongmen. 7. The study found that one strong men in military regimes are more likely to commit human rights abuses and become embroiled in civil wars than are civilian dictatorships. 2. Military strong men start more international wars than either military regimes or civilian dictators, perhaps because they have more reason to fear post ouster exile, prison, or assassination. And 3. Military regimes and civilian dictatorships are more likely to end in democratization in contrast to the rule of military strongmen, which more often ends by insurgency, popular uprising, or invasion. See, popular an authoritarian military dictatorship ruled Chile for 17 years, between September 11, 1973 and March 11, 1990. The dictatorship was established after the democratically elected socialist government of Salvador Allende was overthrown in a coup d'état backed by the United States on September 11, 1973. During this time, the country was ruled by a military junta headed by General Augusto Pinochet. The military used the breakdown of democracy and the economic crisis that took place during Allen's presidency to justify its seizure of power. The dictatorship presented its mission as a national reconstruction. The coup was the result of multiple forces, including pressure from conservative groups, certain political parties, union strikes and other domestic unrest, as well as international factors. The regime was characterized by the systematic suppression of political parties and the persecution of dissidents to an extent unprecedented in the history of Chile. Overall, the regime left over 3,000 dead or missing, tortured tens of thousands of prisoners, too and drove an estimated 200,000 Chileans into exile. 
2023 the dictatorship's effects on Chilean political and economic life continue to be felt. Two years after its ascension neoliberal economic reforms were implemented, in sharp contrast to Allen's leftist policies, advised by a team of free market economists educated in U.S. universities known as the Chicago Boys. Later, in 1980, the regime replaced the Chilean Constitution of 1925 with a new constitution in a sham referendum. Dubious discussed this established a series of provisions that would eventually lead to the 1988 Chilean National Plebiscite on October 5th of that year. In that plebiscite, 55 of voters rejected the proposal of extending Pinochet's presidency for another eight years. Consequently, democratic presidential and parliamentary elections were held the following year. The military dictatorship ended in 1990 with the election of Christian Democrat candidate Patricia Aylwin. However, the military remained out of civilian control for several years after the junta itself had lost power. A military, also known collectively as armed forces, is a heavily armed, highly organized force primarily intended for warfare. It is typically authorized and maintained by a sovereign state, with its members identifiable by their distinct military uniform. It may consist of one or more military branches such as an army, navy, air force, space force, marines, or coast guard. The main task of the military is usually defined as defense of the state and its interests against external armed threats. In broad usage, the terms armed forces and military are often treated as synonymous, although in technical usage a distinction is sometimes made in which a country's armed forces may include both its military and other paramilitary forces. There are various forms of irregular military forces, not belonging to a recognized state though they share many attributes with regular military forces, they are less often referred to as simply military. A nation's military may function as a discrete social subculture, with dedicated infrastructure such as military housing, schools, utilities, logistics, hospitals, legal services, food production, finance, and banking services. Beyond warfare, the military may be employed in additional sanctioned and non-sanctioned functions within the state, including internal security threats, population control, the promotion of a political agenda, emergency services and reconstruction, protecting corporate economic interests, social ceremonies and national honor guards. One the profession of soldiering as part of a military is older than recorded history itself. Two some of the most enduring images of classical antiquity portray the power and feats of its military leaders. The Battle of Gadesh in 1274 BC was one of the defining points of Pharaoh Ramses II's reign, and his monuments commemorate it in boss relief. A thousand years later, the first emperor of unified China, Qin Shi Huang, was so determined to impress the gods with his military might that he had himself buried with an army of terracotta soldiers. 3. The Romans paid considerable attention to military matters, leaving to posterity many treatises and writings on the subject, as well as many lavishly carved triumphal arches and victory columns.